Kept alive has led her from pawn princess to cult icon. It's Tracy Lords. How are you? The redhead <laughs> Tracy Lords. It's a world exclusive premiere. It looks. They like it. Do you like it? It looks wonderful. Why did you decide to go red? Really, because um, I guess I'm tired of being thought of as a moron, <laughs> and <Yeah>. it's. <laughs> you always have that, don't they? I know it sounds really funny, but it's really true. Um, people automatically see you, and you're that blonde. In my video, I've been blonde, blonde all my life. I mean, naturally, I'm dirty blonde, but I'm not that blonde. Okay, there's a little bit of you know bleach involved there, but. Um, I just was like in a phase in my life where I really wanted to be thought of more for my work, my music, my acting, and where I am now and who I am now. And it seemed like my hair was doing me no service at all. So I thought, okay, be gone. Actually, my mother said something funny. She said, never dye your hair when you have PMS or you're in a bad mood. I had both. And so it's red, <laughs> but it was. It was. And that's it. So you, have you now um, got a fast tempo? Because that's what they say about redheads, don't they? Yeah. I know. My boyfriend was really funny about it. He said, well, you know, redheads are known to be crazy. <laughs> I guess we'll see. I feel fiery. I mean, I feel a little bit sassier, but other than that, it's just red. Absolutely. When I wash it, it looks like someone was murdered. You know, the towels are all red. It's very strange. <laughs> we'll enjoy being a redhead. Can I just, I, I, it's extra, I have to say, though, it's a very weird talking to you because you, you don't look like you being a redhead. But anyway, no, it's, enough it's of the really redhead. cool. Enough of the redhead. I landed, you know, I came to the, this morning, so I'm really tired know, right now. And I got off the plane, and the paparazzi was sort of like sneaking like they always lurk. And I had my glasses on, my red hair, and I walked right by. They're going to notice you when you fly back there. I know. I've seen their red hair. Um, how would you describe Tracy Lords? Because you're a musician, um, model, actress. How would you define Tracy Lords? I mean, that's such a weird question. I know, but you I can't, thought I'd go for it. <laughs> I always feel kind of like, a, like an idiot trying to say, well, this is who I am. Um, I know that I'm just really serious right now. I'm at a point in my life where I'm really serious about my, my work. Um, Quality is really important to me. I think making a statement is really important to me. Saying what's on my mind is really important to me. What's on your mind right now? Say it. Um, well, you know, I come from doing the shows. I did Melrose Place and I did Roseanne, and I know that they're, they're just starting to air here. And we had Roseanne this week. Yeah. And you, the waitress in Roseanne, yeah. which was great. And I'm writing my next record right now, my first album, 1,000 Fires on Radioactive. I had two singles that came out, Control and then um, Fallen Angel, which was the video that you just saw. And I'm writing my next one. I want to, want to release a single this summer. So I'm just really, really in work mode. I'm in a good Great. place in my head. So Can we get back to Roseanne? Yes. Because we actually saw that. We I saw the clip there. How did you get on? Because she's meant to be tremendously. Tremendously. Really? Because she's meant she's to be amazing. very difficult. Everyone says that. Yeah. But it goes back to, I mean, I made a joke about the blonde thing. But it goes back to really strong women. I mean, you can be thought of a certain way. If you have an attitude or you have power or you have anything that's not quite what they want you to be. And I think that she's really been a victim of that. With me, she was very professional, she's extremely talented, and she's very powerful. So yeah, she's gonna have enemies. With, with that power, is she the lady that brought you onto the show? Yeah, um, she had everything to do with it. She once walked up to me and told me that it was very rare to have a woman that was pretty and could be funny. And she thought that that was something that was really rare. And she asked me to do her show. And when, she, when I found out she was serious about it, I was completely flattered. Yeah. And uh, I said, absolutely. Do you think that um, she empathized with you? I mean, she has gone on the record of saying that she was a victim. And your past, some could see that you were the ultimate victim because the, the, um, making the porn films underage at 15. But I you, you I were a victim of... I'm a victim maybe of... I was a victim of my own 
youth and being really young. And I mean, it's not a big secret. I'm not uptight about talking about it. I was for a long time. But I was like 14 years old. And I was a drug addict and I was messed up. And I did what I did. And I don't see it as some big thing where I have to say, I'm really sorry that I did this or anything. I hurt myself. I was going through my own thing. I was raped when I was really young. I was, I was really messed up for a long time. And I'm very proud of the fact that once I, once I got older, that I put it behind me, that I could be 18 years old and be recovering and go forward and say, no, I'm not a bimbo, no, I'm not a moron. And no, I don't buy that I'm an outcast or a loser for the rest of my life because it's something I did when I was a kid. How do you put it behind you, though? Because I, I think that when something happens to you in your life that is that, I mean, huge, mm. that you do find strength inside yourself. You really do. And I did. I got really mad. You, it, it's extraordinary. I mean, you, in that time that you just talked about, you made almost 100 films. The, the that's people who—that's no, really not true. That's like the media likes to do that. I mean, as in your last interview, you heard that. There, that was like that's not true at all. More like 15. If okay. That. So you did the so film. So it's a bit. But, but, but I, I'm interested in the people behind the films, not necessarily you and what you did in the films, but the the people who had the money, the people that made these films. What were these people like? I really can't tell you. I mean, people have asked me that. Like I said, I was, I was the kind of girl that would wake up and have three Jack and Cokes in the morning and be high off my butt by 11 o'clock. I don't remember. So you really don't remember those days? I remember enough to make it be uncomfortable, but not mm. enough to make me insane. But those people now, do they ever come knocking at your door? They say, say no. you wouldn't live. It was... I live in a completely different world. I do. And it's great. Do you say no more? You, you won't take your clothes off anymore. Is that true? You're now, you not feel very moral. I, no, it's not that. I mean, I have my own sense of who I am and what I want to do and what I, want, what, what I don't want to do. When I was 18 and, and I was going to acting school, I was studying at Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute and that was sort of like, it's been, you have to remember, it's been like nine years now. Mm. Okay? When I first started, I said, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to be in exploitation films. I don't want to, I don't want to be, um, you know, the topless bimbo in movies. I really wanted to act. So I made a point of not doing it, but I always said, if the right film came along and it was really about the movie, that yeah. I don't have a problem with my body. It's not about me being uncomfortable with who I am or what I am or how I look, because I'm not. It was about not wanting to be the token bimbo, but to be exploited, because I already felt like I'd been there. Yeah. You know, I felt like I don't ever have to screw another person for a job. I don't ever have to take my top off. I've done it. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, how about, though, um, allegedly $12 million was paid to Demi Moore for strip tease. Yeah, if good you for been, her. Would, if you'd been offered that job, would you have taken that job? I don't know. I mean, it was really strange because in the States, you know Howard Stern. Does everybody know Howard Stern? He's doing... For you people here. He does no. the radio. Is it radio? Huge, huge, huge in the States. And he's got a book out called Body Parts, and he's amazing. Ivan Reitman's producing his movie, and, and I was offered one of the roles in it last week, and I was very torn because it's a huge movie, it's a great part, and I could not see myself being naked in a tub with Howard Stern. As much as I respect him, I just thought, <gasps> my mother's going to see this. I couldn't do it. So it's Has your mother not seen the other stuff? Yet? My mother knows everything. Oh. And she... So she's seen it before, then? No, but she's never seen it. You know, she knows that it's, it's, it exists, of course, because it was a big deal. I mean, it was mm. a huge scandal when you have the FBI knocking on your door. Yeah, you, you're aware of it, you know. But as far as, my mother is the coolest person on the face of the earth because she's one of the only individuals I've ever met that truly said, did not judge me, did not do anything, just said, I'm glad you're okay. Sounds very she's cool, She's remarkable. Mom. She really is. So, uh, you, I mean, you said it, uh, you know, for, for me, putting all of this behind you seems... It's been the nine years. Is that is it taken the nine years to put it all behind you? The ex porn star. You can't put it behind you. I'm going to die. And I, John Waters once said to me, and it was very funny. He said, because you know he's notorious for having the movie where Divine eats um, doo doo. The, the director. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know if everyone knows what I'm talking about, but you know the film with Divine, and you did a film with John Waters yeah, as well. Yeah, Cry Baby, and then Serial Mom. But he once said to me that when he dies on his tombstone, it will say John Waters, and it will say Shit Eater on it. <laughs> you know. So what's yours going to say? I always I always thought that somewhere on it it would make reference to ex porn star and it's it's very likely and if I make my mark and say what I want to say I don't care what they say about me I don't really really I mean sometimes people will get you they'll catch you off guard and it will hurt you or it'll make you um, momentarily kind of like oh okay take the knife out of my back but basically do you think that that might be ooh, jealousy from what you've done now I people who say she's standing up for herself well, if you look at it, people really don't like to see people succeed, I don't think. At least in Hollywood, it seems like everybody wants to do what you're doing, and um, people will take their cracks at you. They will. And that's to be expected, and not everyone's like that, thank God. Mm -hmm. And all you can do is the best you can do, and do your work, and hope that somebody gets it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. 
Well, I wish you the, the very best of luck. Thank Certainly you. the red hair looks good in you. Well, that feisty lady, go for it. Thank you. Tracy Lord, thank you very much. Please join me coming up after the break, we've got the stars of the hit series, Bally Kiss Angel.